We start off with site number one on the far side of the campground. The tent pad itself is located here in the middle of the trail that ends at site number one. This site is pretty isolated from all the other sites. If you're looking for privacy, it's a great option. The best part of the site is past its past the tent pad and down here to the water. And we'll take a look at that. And here's the main water access for site number one. It's a really beautiful spot as it comes out to this point and you have water on both sides of this point. The beaches themselves on both sides are pretty sandy. There are a few rocks, so be careful. If you have a boat, you may want to tie it up just a little bit off of the water like you can see there. Um, and of course you have this island across the way to explore as well. When you go down to the water, it is a bit of a steep climb up. So Bear that in mind that it is a bit of a haul. You may want to tie a rope and help yourself up with that. But other than that, it's, it's this, you can't beat this beach. It's beautiful. Near site number one, you also have a sandy beach. Um, the access to it is a little bit behind site number one as you head towards site number two, as you've got this small, um, small trail that comes down to this big, wide, sandy beach, and then go all the way down because of the branches down right there. But it's a great beach to either hang out in the day or park your boat in if you don't, if you have more than one. Keep in mind though that a lot of day trippers come and use this beach too. Here we have site number two. Um, it's also a little bit secluded. It's kind of around the corner on another little point from site number one. It doesn't have as great views as site number one, but it's still pretty great. Um, it has a kind of a trail that comes down to it from the main trail up to the outhouses. But one of the best things about this site is that there is a sandy beach in the cove um, on the other side between this one and site number three. And there is a trail, as you can see right through here, that goes down and to it. It looks like a bit of a walk, but it doesn't look too steep. This could be a great place to park and unload. So we're going to go check it out. So take a look at this. Look at this beach. Big, wide, shallow. This would be perfect beach to park your boat, to play in. You've got lots of room. So it looks like all of the old bathrooms were are still outhouses, but they look a lot nicer. So we're gonna go ahead and open it just to, for reference. Not great. Not great. Lots of spiders still. Lots of spiders still. Hey, they looks the first year we came, they were horrific. Um, but still, I'd probably walk over to site 22 to use the bathroom for important things. All right. Site number four is really tucked back here behind site number five. So site five is right there. And then this is the trail to six. So you're kind of out here secluded on this point. So I think this is four's water access. It's right by the main sign for the Double Springs campground. You got a little beach, some rocks. It's it's very steep though. And you got a huge hole right here, so be careful. One last note about the water access here at site number four is just how steep it is. I wanted to try to get a better video of just how steep up it is. If you're gonna park your boat here or canoes here, um, definitely tie a rope and, and use that to help yourself up. The water down there though is kind of a mix of sand and some big rocks, so really be careful when you're parking your boat in there. Um, you may be able to anchor it a little bit offshore. If you have a canoe though, just you know, pull right up and maybe tie it to a tree. Um, but yeah, uh, just be really wary of this huge step up here. So here's site number five. It's kind of tucked up here on this hillside. It does not have great water access, so I'm thinking you're going to have to use the same water access from six, of which it's just back this trail and up some steps, but you know, you need to make sure that people there are kind of nice and willing to, to leave your room and share with you. Um, but I'm not so sure I would recommend this one. Kind of walking through other people's campsite almost to get to them from the water. Um, and you don't have like a great water access of your own. So here we have site number six. This was the old number one site. It's a great site. Um, over here on the right, we have steps going up to the ridge where the bathrooms are or the outhouses. Um, a big tent pad here, but it's got great views of the water. It is a little bit um, sunny, so be careful of that. Um, 
if you're coming in the summer. And then it's water access down here where the people are unloading. But let's give them a little bit to head on out and then I'll take you over that way. So here we have the water access at site six. You may also be sharing with site four and five. Um, as you can see, people are still heading out for the day. They're doing different um, trips. Uh, but I believe they're coming from site five up there through the woods. So maybe that's doable. I didn't really see a clear path though. Um, the access itself is pretty nice. It's got sand and makes a rock, so be careful with your boats. And it does have a pretty big step up. But then once you get up that step, it's a very gentle uh, walk to site six. Here we have site number seven. The tin pad is in the middle of the main trail here, which is a little bit inconvenient, but not too bad. Uh, site number seven has kind of two water access points. The first one's like positioned right here in the middle of the tin pad. It's uh, like a dirt path going down to the water. Um, and in the video here, you can see there's a branch across it, but uh, it's not too big of a deal. Um, it's, you could easily just haul it off to the side. The second access point is a little bit before this tent pad towards site number six. And as you can see, there's some proper steps down to the water there. There were people docked here, so I didn't want to get too close. Um, but there are some large rocks in the water that I'll show you from the water side. So here we have the water access for site seven from the water side. As you can see, there's some big rocks here, so be careful. I mean, this is a nice kind of like swimming and wading area. Um, and as there is some sand, but just be really careful docking your boat. The second access point you'll see right here. Again, big rocks, um, but this is the one that has the actual stairs up, I believe. So this is just another option. Here we have site number eight. As you can see, it's placed here in the middle of the trail path on the side of the cove. In the distance in the background, you can see the next site right there. Seven, here's the water. Here you can see your steps down to the to the water. There's actually two different stair sets here. Here's the first one, and I'll show you the second one in a moment. And then in the distance over there, you can see site 10, but you will have site nine, which is kind of hidden down in the, by the water right down there. Here we have the second set of stairs. It's just a little bit to the right of those first ones I showed. Um, this one has kind of two sets of steps, this one here and this one, another set closer to the tent pads. Looking at your water access here, you kind of have two spots. The first one is this spot. Um, most likely this is where site nine will be docking um, as it's right there on the corner. Um, but there is a, another spot right over here. And as you can see, there's a lot of big rocks here and it's actually quite a big step up from the water there to where this tree is. Um, and then there's rocks pretty far out in the water. So just be really careful as you're pulling your boat up to unload and dock it here. Um, as you can see, the, you, a few feet offshore you should be okay, but if you're coming up real close, there's just a lot of rocks there. And then here is it from the water side. Uh, as you see, the whole coastline is pretty, uh, has a lot of trees and it has a lot of rocks. That right there is what we were just looking at, that little spot. So this is one of my favorite sites. I think this was eight before, but it's now nine, or maybe this was seven before. Um, but you're right here down this little flat area right by the water. Um, come on down. I've never actually been able to stay at this site, but I've wanted to try to book it for, for several years. But talk about it. You can park right here in this little, it's a very little kind of nook. It's real nice. There are rocks there, but they kind of fall off and go steep. So you can just push the boat a little bit off and they should be fine. Um, here on this point, and look at that view. It's just beautiful. Um, the main trail is right up this hill, but you don't even, you know, you don't have to go up there unless you want to go up to the bathroom. So like you park right here, you unload to your tent pad and that's it. So this site, number nine, is uh, definitely, definitely recommended if you can get it. And here you can see the water access for site nine. Um, as you can see, it's a tent pad, um, which is just right up there and the woods a little bit where there's all those stones are is really close to the water. There's a great little area here and a cove on the right hand side to to park your boat and unload and then have your own little kind of swimming area. So a really nice water access. So here we have site 10. I don't know what site this was originally, but it definitely wasn't 10. It's a nice new big site. You can see site 11 in the background there. Um, which is pretty far away. And then down, way down there, you can probably see what is site nine. 
And then here is uh, Site 10's path. So I'm gonna go down. So you have this big rock you have to be careful about. Um, but you have, do have some steps here, which is super nice. You don't have steps down there. And it's kind of like a big flat rock here under the water. Um, obviously a big rock there, but you can kind of very gently put some canoes up here or off the coast right there, right there, put your boat. Um, and you're no longer trying to vie for this space with what was, there was like two sites here originally, but now there's just one. So this is really nice. But it's one thing to keep in mind is that it is quite steep going up the hill. It's kind of, it's very rooty, uh, which it's not super, um, muddy, which is good, but uh, it is quite steep. Here you can see the beach for 10 um, from the water side. Um, and you can see it's got pretty big rocks, but it's kind of, you know, it's got a little path up and it's got little steps that you can't see between, behind this um, um, bush here. But you know, it's watch out for the rocks, but it kind of has a nice little area if you want to like swim and then to unload. You know, it has, it has a place to unload. Here we have site 11 used to be 12. Um, it's back here in this corner. No, there's no site behind it now, which is where 13 used to be. Um, you do have your, uh, like a trail down to the water. It's just quite long trail. We do have some steps here and we have some steps on the other side that you can take it down and through. You can see them a little bit right over here. Um, this will also be where most likely uh, 12 and 13 will be unloading to and parking. So he also got steps down to the water. We'll head on down there and show you what the beach looks like from this side. So here we're coming down to the beach for 12 and 13. Again, it's, like I said, it's a little bit of a long walk. We do have like a nice beach down here at the bottom of it, which you will have to share with the other sites that use it. Um, again, so be kind of be careful here. Steps. I won't go all the way down just now. You, here you can see the nice sandy beach. Great view of the, the whole cove. But right through here, great place to hang out and park your boat and unload. And we, here we have that beach uh, from the water side. As you can see, it looks quite small here, so it's not a huge beach like you do, um, like you have over by site one or two, but it is still a nice sandy beach. Around this corner here, there's actually another sandy beach, which I'll show you in just a little bit, um, but I wanted to show you where that one was in relation to this one. So from 11, you have a big open area where there's nothing really here. Then you have, a trail going up to what I think is 13, and a trail going this way to what is 12. Yes, and this trail back here goes to the rest of the sites. And here you have site 12. As you can see, it's kind of tucked back in here, so it is relatively secluded. However, you will be sharing water access in the beach with people at site 11 and or 13. So even though it is tucked back in here, that is a consideration. Plus, it's a little bit of a long walk from those beaches. So keep that in mind as well when you're packing. Uh, unfortunately, the water on the other side of the peninsula, which you can see here, is pretty far down there. There's no real path. It's very steep, so you really won't be able to access it from this side. So here we are. We've hiked it up to 13. Ooh, this is kind of a steep hillside. Right at the end, it gets real steep. You have your own little kind of tucked away up here. Um, you got a lot of open space behind you. Here's the trail down here. So you would need to walk down here and then walk down the next hillside or walk around the corner to the other beach. Ooh, we have a little bee's nest happening in the fire pit. But the, this is like a hike now. I think I pick 11 or 12 over 13 now. Here we have a, a little beach in between sites, kind of 13 and then 14 and 15. Um, it is a far way down there, as you can see only a little bit of the sandy beach from here. Um, I'll show you what it looks like from the water side in a second. But the trail itself is, is pretty 
not too, too steep in places, and it is pretty well marked. As you can see it comes up here. Uh, so it is a good option for people maybe at site 13 or even 14 um, to have like a, a beach and a parking spot that they don't want to share with a lot of other people. Uh, and then the, how you get with 13 is that you take this trail up and around to, to those areas. And here we have that same beach from the water side. So you can see it's a pretty big, nice, wide, sandy beach, especially for Tricassi. Um, so it could be worth it to uh, make the walk to sites 13 or 14. All right, so here are 14 and 15. They're very close together out here in the small little point. I wouldn't want to book one of these without knowing who is at the other one. Also, 15 has some water access. That's pretty good, but 14 does not. It's kind of surrounded by steep cliffs on each side. So let's go look at 14 first. It's like good views of the lake. And as you can see, there's no real good water access. It's kind of steep. But if you're you're um, with people from 15 though, then you're kind of, you got it made. Okay, 15's got good views too. Doesn't have a lot of shoreline. You're kind of up and away from the water and hopefully maybe then the bugs. The 15 does have this little path. And what's really would need to happen is that 14 and 15 would need to be able to share this little, this little path and water access. Because if they don't, then 14 is gonna have to park way back at that far beach. So here's the access. So you can see the rocks already in the water. Now we did see a power boat here, but because it gets quite deep right offshore. So I think he just kind of anchored it a little bit off. But you got kind of a steep step up here. So just be careful on loading. I'm a careful park in your boat near the rocks. But this is definitely 14 and 15 would need to share this. So I wanted to show a little bit more about this cluster of sites. Back there where that red tint one was site 19. Um, they're all in this kind of this back cove area and you can see a stream there, but that this cove is really kind of inaccessible. Um, you could maybe make do, but um, it's, it will be really hard to climb up these, this steep hillside. There's no trail. Then up there you have two sites, 16 and 17. That's a really far hike either from down in that cove, which I said isn't accessible, or from the other areas. Um, it's really far up. And then over this bridge and back towards this way is a trail up. And again, for reference, there's 19. And then up this trail is 18. So 18 is a high, is a hike up too. Okay, so 16 is a hall. Where that bridge is, it's not really near the water. You have a hall up a really steep hillside. Then I'll haul up this steep hillside. Then here's 16. And up here in a way, if you had were packing very light, didn't really need to do that many uh, lungs, then you're kind of tucked away back here. You can see uh, 17 down there, so that's really the only close sight, but I wouldn't recommend this one. This one is a hike. And here we have site 17. It's actually a little bit closer to that main trail from 16, but it is still quite a climb up here. Um, here you can see that bridge and the main trail that we used to the camp. Again, the water is below there, and it's a hike up just to that bridge. Uh, but here we have the site. It's kind of, again, tucked up back here. You're a little close to 16, and but that's really kind of it. The next closest sites are 18 and 19. Um, if you're packing very light, this one, you know, you could make it do, but it's, it's not one of my favorites. It's just um, a little too far of a walk from the water, and um, uh, especially when you're carrying a cooler, it could be a little tough. So here we have site 18. Um, it's just around the corner from 16, 17, across the bridge, and then up the steep hillside. Uh, down there is, you can see a little bit of the main trail. This is a steep climb, both from the water and then up this steep path. There is an alternative route that I'll show you in a second, um, and I'd basically recommend you park by site 22 and take a long, gradual climb up. Uh, 
and to get from there is right there. That trail will take you back towards the sites in their 20s and then down the hill to, to the kind of the unloading spot at site 22. And right there you have site 19. So then that's really it. Uh, that's probably the closest site. So let's go up closer to the tent pad. Here we are at the tent pad. Here see it's, a, it's a, your standard pad. Um, coming up here, you do have like a nice view of the surrounding area. And you can see a little bit of the other campsites in the background, but they're really not that close. So you're kind of a little bit secluded out here. Again, 19 right there where that red tent is, is probably your closest neighbor. But other than that, uh, that's probably the best perk here. If you want to going to camp here, I would suggest to camp light, park near site 22 and take the long gradual hike up uh, rather than climbing up the steep hillsides on the other side. Here's number 19. It's kind of right by the main trail through here. It's a nice spot. You have nice water access. You have people walking by your campsite quite a bit. So if that's something that bothers you, maybe look to get another one. And then you do have a little steep hillside here. But it does go down to the water and does give you some water access without a huge climb. So here's the water access for 19. As you can see rocks, you got a motorboat, just be careful. And the rocks are slick, so if you're unloading, you know, back it up and be careful how you're stepping off. But you do have a little bit of water access here and a good place to kind of float from or swim from. You don't have a beach, but so few ones do. I would recommend 19. Just be real careful of these rocks. So Ryan found a little, very small beach here. Um, site 19 is right to my left, and then the peninsula out to the 20s is that way. Um, I found a little beach here. There's no site really near here except for 19, which has their own like uh, little parking spot. Um, but there's a little trail, and this way I would still maybe unload out by the point, but this would be nice to then come and be able to park your boat and kind of keep it away and, and tucked away into a little cove. I wanted to show a little bit here um, about the trail here that comes around this side of the campground. Um, it's between basically 19, where that boat is, and 21, which I haven't even gotten to yet. There is this break point where you, um, you can see the other side of the cove, and it's really beautiful. Um, but it is quite a height from like 19, 18, 16, 17, all the way out here to uh, 21, which is just right around here in this corner. So these two areas of the campground are pretty far spread apart. Also on the map, it looks like 20 should be right here, but it's not. Um, it's up on the hillside by 23, and I'll show you that in a second. So I wanted to start this this part of the video with showing the main water, water access for sites 20 and up. It's out here on this point. Um, there's a little American flag that people told us to look out for. It may not be there in the future though. Um, there are a lot of rocks here, but it is a kind of a wide open spot and really the best access, water access for sites 20 through 25. Um, maybe even 18, 16, 17 too, to be honest. Um, be careful of those rocks there in the water. You may need to, you know, anchor it a little bit offshore. Then you have a pretty big step up, but doable, and then this little trail. Um, the little trail goes for just around the corner there, um, and then it meets the main trail right at basically Site 21. Um, and then the Site 22 is literally right behind you. And here we have that water access from the water side. So as you're coming up, you can kind of keep an eye out for it. Um, you can see the big... Um, kind of clear area and then that trail kind of going up and right there up and to the to the right um, right up and behind it is site 22 so you, I didn't show that in the previous video but it's right there so if you're at right there site 22 um, so if you have that campsite reserved the spot is perfect but if not it's a gradual walk up to the other side so this is definitely the kind of preferred uh, water access and uh, docking boating and loading area for these sites and here we have the pit toilet for sites 19 and up. Um, as you can see, it's a real kind of bathroom and not an outhouse. So you open up here, it's just your simple kind of pit toilet. I bring your own toilet paper and hand sanitizer. And there is a fan that runs during the day, it's solar powered, that can help uh, with the smell. Next we have site number 20. It's actually closer to 23, 24, and 25 than it is to 19 or 21 or 22. It's kind of perched up here, in the, up here on the hillside. Down there is the main trail where I showed just a little bit of good. And then here is the other trail that kind of goes um, 
up to 24, 25, and then if you keep going all the way to 18. Um, over this little little point here is site 23. It's relatively close though, so um, you can see it quite well. And then down this hill is the bathroom, and then past the bathroom is site 21. Down here we have site 21. Um, and uh, it's a really nice site. It's really close to the kind of the unloading point that I showed earlier. It's behind this point. Even though it's back in the trees, you have a pretty nice view of the surrounding uh, lake. And it's really nice. Um, you do have um, a, a trail here extending out the front of the tin pad down to um, site 22. So if you were to book, the, book these two together, um, they're, they're relatively close and that would be handy. Um, that was site 22 down back there. Um, the only thing I maybe don't like about this site is that the main trail going from basically that water access near site 22 back to the other sites is right on the other side of this little hill and then continues that way to site 19 and then up this way to sites 20, 23, 24, and 25, and 18. Um, you can see the bathroom right there and then it's just further up the hillside to the others. So here's site 22. Um, it's out here on this point on the new point. It's the farthest one out on the point. As you can see you have a, a great you know, view of the water, of, this, of the lake. You're also right by the a great place to unload. That, however, this would probably be where most people for sites 20, um, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, oh, 20 and up sites will unload. So that's the only thing that could be, you know, while people are coming in and out, they may be um, walking by your site a lot. Um, but overall, I think it is a great site and I would definitely recommend this one. Here is site number 23. As you can see, it's pretty close to number 20, which is where we're at this time. Um, it also doesn't have a great parking spot. Um, uh, it does have a, it's pretty secluded over here, I believe. Um, and it does look, it's quite pretty, kind of tucked away once you get down here into it. Um, but again, no great parking spot. You kind of park by the point. Here we have site 24. It's just a little bit farther up the hill from site 23. Um, it's kind of, uh, again, tucked away back up here, though you are a little bit close to site 25, which I'll show in a second. Um, but it, it's a, it's nicely tucked back up in here. Um, again, you'll probably want to park all the way down by 22 at that water axis, um, though then it is a kind of a gradual climb up, though it is quite far. Uh, there isn't really a place any closer to park, as you can see the water down there is really far and there's no trail. Uh, and right there, you can see site 23. Um, on the other side of campsite 24 is the main trail. Here's this trail that goes down to the bathroom, um, which you can't quite see, but it's t right there on the right side, and then down to the water at site 22, uh, 22 and that water access where I suggest you park and unload. Um, and then here is site campsite number 25 on the left, and then this trail goes out to site 18. And you can kind of see a little bit through the woods there, uh, but if you're going to site 18, this is where that trail goes, comes up, and then that way. Uh, but let's head on over to site 25. Here we have uh, site 25. Again, it's tucked back up here. Um, it's not one of my favorites. Again, it's a kind of a long walk from the water. Um, it's not as bad as a few others. And then you are kind of tucked back up here with only um, a few other sites nearby. There's 20, that's where we stayed that last time. And then 23 is right around the corner.